Keeping it real, keeping it real. Keeping it real, keeping it real. Keeping it real with Reverend Laura. Mere intellectual knowledge of spiritual concepts is never going to be enough. Having a rudimentary understanding of the spiritual concepts is good for you. It's, it's the basis for it. It's the, what we have to start with. But if we don't do something with that, then our lives don't change. We don't actually develop a deep, abiding understanding of what we're talking about there. Simply talking about and announcing spiritual principle or spiritual truths is really is really never going to get us anywhere. In fact, it's what we modern in modern day call spiritual bypass. When we can talk a good game, but there's no changes in our lives. Ernest Holmes called this spiritual malpractice. He said one of the greatest difficulties in the new order of thought is that we are likely to indulge in too much theory and too little practice. That's quoted from the Science of Mind textbook. Too much thought about the theory and too little actual practice. My experience with Science of Mind was that when I actually began to apply what I was learning in a scientific, systematic way, then I began to see changes in my life. You know, one of our most popular axioms in our, in our movement here is change your thinking, change your life. It's honestly the basic assumption that informs the, our concept of the creative process and the method in which we bring about change in our life. But when was the last time you applied this in any consistent way in your life? When did you actually experiment with it and try it and see if you could make a change in your life by um, engaging in this activity? Last week, we explored the values of asking questions. And this week we're looking at, um, and this, I mean, so this, this month we've been looking at awe, wonder, awe, and curiosity, the power of those things in our lives. When we look at the questions that we're asking and we change the questions, then we, as we talked about last week, we change the quality of our lives. And asking good questions open us to, opens us to a greater inquiry into and an exploration of this whole idea of change your thinking, change your life. Again, I can say that over and over and over again, but I'm not going to experience any results from it until I actually apply it. So what does changing your thinking really mean? It means that we not only change what we think about, but we also have to change the way that we think. In order to really change our lives, it must be more than just our thinking. We must also change our belief systems and our behaviors. Our behaviors and our beliefs arise from our experiences. And what we think about and what we believe also influence our experiences. So it's kind of a, a cyclic thing. In order to actually begin to see some change in our lives, we actually have to begin to experiment with it and see, okay, if I take something that I'm, I'm believing right now and I apply some of these spiritual truths to it, some of these spiritual principles that we've been reading about, studying about, thinking about, talking about for so long, I can actually begin to shift my experience. So just like any scientist, <clears throat> we go through the scientific process with this. But we don't have to outline the processes like we would do when, a, when, when I, or like I did when I was teaching biology to sixth graders. We actually begin to start with a question. Our question comes from our observations, from things that we are experiencing. And when we begin to do that, then we can, we can set up this question and then we can set up an experiment that goes along with it to see what, what we can do. Um, even if we're not using Petri dishes and Bunsen burners and microscopes, we can create an experiment in our lives. Our life becomes our laboratory. So let's take a look at one idea, one aspect of this. When I first started at Science of Mind, I, um, the first class I took was treatment and meditation class. I had no clue what treatment was, but I was intrigued by meditation. Little did I know I would find a powerful practice within the class of um, the practice of treatment. And so um, after, after a while of taking the class, I thought, you know what? 
these people that are around me, they they seem to believe that this thing works, that this treatment thing works. So let me do a little experiment and see if I can actually begin to shift something in my life. And so at that time in my life, I was uh, I was challenged by my finances. I uh, had a tendency to spend too much, and uh, then uh, at the end of the month, I was struggling to uh, to have enough money to cover things that I needed to do. And so I thought, well, let me let me apply this this idea of changing my thinking, changing my life to this and and this practice of treatment, this, whatever this thing is. And for those of you that don't know, it's our uh, form of prayer. Uh, it's a affirmative prayer. And so let me let me apply it and see what I can do. And so I um I started off with I pay my bills on time. And and incorporating that statement of truth into um my treatment work. And it was pretty good. You know, I, I started actually seeing a little bit of um movement in that where they were actually being paid on time. And then I thought, well, okay, let's see if I can expand this a bit. And so I said I pay my bills on time and I have money left over to do the things I want to do. I thought, okay, so I worked with that for a couple of weeks and, you know, things are really started opening up for me. I had a little bit of extra money in the account each week. And so it was kind of a nice feeling. And then I thought, well, this is, seems to be working. So let me try to take it another step further. So I pay my bills on time. I have money left over to do the things I want to do and to support the causes I believe in. And that was when I began to actually systematically do our practice of tithing. Um, at that time, it was not anywhere near 10%, which is the technical definition of tithing, but it was certainly more than I had been giving before. And I began to see big changes happening in my life. And so, so taking these, this um, idea of a, abundance and prosperity and all the spiritual things I had heard about it, you know, that we live in an infinite universe and, um, you know, God is our source of everything. I actually began to live with those truths and apply them in a consistent way in my life and began to experience changes. I thought this is pretty cool. Edwin Gaines talks about the same, same thing in her book, um, The Four Laws of Spiritual Prosperity, A Simple Guide to Unlimited Abundance. She shares a story of how she experimented with the practice of tithing and how tithing her very last dollar opened the floodgates to changing her life forever. I had a similar instance. I was getting ready to go on a, on vacation and I was leaving on vacation a few days before my payday. And I was thinking, if I don't give my tithe this month, I could just hold on to that. And then when I come back from my vacation, I'll, I'll give it. I'll, I'll, um, go ahead and, and contribute that. So that, you know, the church won't be out any money, but I could wait and I could have that little extra money to start for the start of my vacation. And, um, I had my check already written out and I was sitting in my car at the church and, and I, uh, I was having this conversation in my head. And so I, I left the car, the check in my car. Thought, okay, I'll just pay that next week. And so I started walking into the sanctuary and um, I got about halfway there and I turned around and I went back and got the check. It wasn't like a conscious thought. It was just like, okay, that's what I'm doing. And I went back and I got it and um, went ahead and put the check in there. So I, I was trusting. I was trusting that I was going to have enough abundance, enough supply to have a good time on my vacation. And so I um, didn't think anything more about it. The next day, when I get home from work, I have a, a check in the mailbox. Now, it was a check that I was for teaching a class that I was doing for a university. And I knew it would be coming, but I didn't think it would be coming for another five weeks because that we normally got paid after we finished the class. But unbeknownst to me, the university had changed its policy and it started to give us, pay us half the money after the first half of the class and then send us the remaining money at the end of the class. So I had a check for $1,200 to take on my vacation that I wasn't expecting. And for me, that was just really tangible proof that when I trusted in this idea of supply and abundance, that when I, when I took those principles that I had been studying, I actually put them into practice and things opened up in my life. Keeping it real with Reverend Laura.